What's going on everybody? This is a quick update on the spider robot here. So I had some time to work on him and I've got this going. So basically what you're seeing here is he's learned how to tilt and I can control it. So this is tilting front and back. And then this one is tilting uh, right and left. So you can do a little uh, little spin here for you, a little stretch maybe. So how did I do this? How did I achieve this? Well, I'll tell you, you know, it's fairly simple in a way, but also you can think of it as a little complicated too, if I can get down here. So, how did I do it? What I did was I ran the robot for a while just to collect some data. So this is all data-based, this movement, this control, right? So what the robot's doing right now is picking some random joint angles, moving to those joint angles, and then measuring acceleration in the X, Y, and Z axes. And you can think of measuring acceleration uh, as measuring how much it's tilting in a certain direction. So basically, I'm collecting pairs of joint angles and acceleration due to gravity. That is my training data. Next, we stop the data collection. We normalize uh, the accelerometer data. And then we look at correlations I'm just trying to see if there's any sort of relationship between uh, specific joint angles and tilting in certain directions. The point here is you can see this negative correlation. So as the robot tilts forward, the joint angle gets more and more negative. And as it tilts backwards, the joint angle increases. So there's this simple relationship between the angles on the uh, robot's joints and how much it's tilting uh, forwards and backwards. So we can look at all those correlations just for tilting forwards and backwards. So you can see the joint angle uh, that corresponds to this green or purple line or blue and pink line. Uh, all these joint angles decrease, seem to decrease as the robot tilts forward. So now that we have these relationships, I can give a desired tilt to the robot and have these linear models output uh, angles for the joints. And I'll do that from, you know, tilting fully backwards to fully forwards. And so you can see it's learned uh, something here. You know, it, it seems to be working fairly well. It's, it's leaning backwards and then forwards. But these linear relationships don't capture uh, interactions between uh, different joints, right? So there's no kind of mixing of the data. So if we want to get more complicated relationships going, you know what I'm going to say neural network of course so let's uh, define our neural network here our neural network takes two inputs it's the tilt forward and backward and left and right those are our two features and we have it output eight numbers and those correspond to the angles of the joints on our uh, robots eight uh, motors here now we have 64 hidden units in this neural network as well. And how did I come to 64 hidden units? I just guessed, of course. So we define the network by just running that cell. And now we can train it. And I'm visualizing uh, the joint angles for tilting in the x-axis only here. And so you can see even after just a, uh, a little bit of training, uh, that's 10 epochs per frame of that animation, you can see that the network has learn something here and if we compare it to our linear correlations you can see that green and purple start high and decrease and up here green and purple start high and decrease um, blue and pink start high and decrease over here and blue and pink start high and decrease over here so it looks like the model is learning something useful but to test it we can uh, run this method and now I have these sliders where I can give the model an input, a desired tilt, and it outputs joint angles for the robot, which I then send out to the robot and have it actually run. So here I can tilt 
it's forwards and backwards. And yeah, I mean, that looks pretty, pretty good. It looks like it learned something and I can tilt left and right like so. And so it looks like we've learned something there, definitely. And what's interesting uh, with using a neural network or these linear models is that we can extrapolate. So we can go beyond the limits of what this guy has ever seen and try to push the tilting as far as we can. So if I push the tilting forward as far as I can, you can see it's leaning forward and then its legs actually come up off the ground here. I don't know if you can see that, that leg right there. See how that's actually coming off the ground? So it's like, it's, it's kind of extrapolating what it's seen before and pushing it to an extreme. So it's doing something reasonable, you know. Uh, if we try to lean back as far as we can, it keeps going back and back and there's not much extrapolation there. Let's try left and right. If we go left as far as we can, I see some legs coming off the ground and right as far as we can. Definitely have some, some legs coming off the ground. So finally to do this little spin or this little uh, you know yoga move here, um, I just use a sine and cosine uh, to give desired tilts in left and left, right and forward and back. And so it should kind of tilt in this angular motion, circular motion, I should say. And we can kind of speed that up and just see him do a little a little tilt dance. Let me make sure you can see him. So these are very basic starting points uh, for controlling this guy. Um, but I like it. I like the fact that I don't have to figure out, I don't even have to know the connections of these motors, which motor is which, to make this guy perform these movements, you know? I, I just learn the mapping from sensor data to um, joint angles, and that's enough. So I, to me, that's, uh, that's amazing. Um, I think what I wanna do next is possibly be able to maybe put this guy in a book, and as I tilt the book, I want him to like counteract the tilting, you know, so he stays uh, as level as he can. So it's kind of like a, uh, a response to the environment, right? Because right now it's just direct control for me. So anyways, that's a quick update on the spider and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.